Number 10, Hyena. For the record, they're not laughing with you, they're laughing at you. But ironically, not for the reason you think. There's a lot of misconceptions about hyenas, mainly that they laugh to mock their foes, or sometimes they can't even control it, like Ed from The Lion King. Yet it's meant as both a warning and a signal. If you hear a hyena laugh, it's not amused and it's willing to attack you. And it uses its laugh to call other hyenas to assist if it's necessary. Which, as The Lion King also showed, you don't want a pack of hyenas coming at you. But what many forget is that the jaw of the hyena is strong. It's super strong. It has the greatest jaw strength in proportion to its body among mammals. And that's a lot of strength. How much power do they have in their jaws? We're talking 1,100 PSI. So they're quite dangerous. And you can see why they have a lot of foes and rivals in the plains of Africa. And their speed makes them hard to get away from as they can run up to 40 miles per hour. So they can run fast, bite hard, and attack in packs. That's one dangerous creature. And yes, they're still laughing at you. Number 9. Grizzly Bear There are a lot of bears in the world, and each of them has their own strengths that you should take note of. But the one humans usually stay away from due to its raw strength is the grizzly bear. Not the least of which is because the grizzly bear is the largest bear in the world today, and it can weigh up to 1,500 pounds at times. Combine that with their incredible agility, intellect, and flexibility, and they can get pretty much anything they put their mind to. Despite their near 7-foot length, these bears can run about 35 miles per hour. Which is good, because they need to be fast to catch up with some of the prey they like to hunt, like buffalo and bison. Or to catch humans whom they feel are threatening their families. Which brings us to their strength. Between their frame and their claws, they wield lethal power that makes them lord over every single creature that comes into their territory. But let's not forget about that bite strength, because their teeth can crush and rend flesh very easily with a power of 1,160 PSI. That's more than enough to kill a human, a fish, a bison, and more. So in short, don't give a bear the chance to bite you. Number 8. Polar Bear Despite not being the biggest bear in the world, the polar bear is the bear species that has the greatest bite strength at a power of 1,200 PSI, making it a very dangerous threat. While they're not the biggest bear, they're still rather impressive, and they can get really tall when they're standing on their hind legs. Not to mention, they weigh at times about 1,500 pounds. So why do they need this kind of massive bite strength? That would be because of the prey they eat in the Arctic Circle. They're known for going after seals and even walruses at times, both of which can be rather hard to catch, as in the seals, or put down like the walruses. Thus, bite strength helps them in a major way. It's documented how extraordinarily powerful these polar bears are. So while they may seem to be a creature you want to get close to, you might want to just keep your distance. And now for number 7. But first, what animal do you think has the strongest bite? Leave your guess in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel. Number 7. Gorilla Primates are stated to be the closest living thing on Earth to humans, which should be a comforting thing that we're all very alike. But when you look at their body types, you can tell that they're incredibly strong. Primates of various types can perform unique feats of strength and skill. Yet when it comes to the biggest of them, though, you have to choose the gorilla as their strongest. In terms of sheer size, the gorilla is the largest primate in the world, and it shows what it can do more often than you might think. Size-wise, they're impressive in every stat. They can grow to be 6 feet tall, and their wingspan can be over 8 feet, while their weight can be between 5 and 600 pounds, depending on where they are. But it's their strength that should be feared. They're stated to be 9 times stronger than humans on average, and have been known to lift double what an average human can do. That's a lot to put into perspective when you think about it, and I haven't even gotten to their teeth yet. While you don't think about it when you consider gorilla strength, their bite force is even more powerful than a lion, measuring in at 1,300 pounds per square inch, meaning that you don't monkey around with this primate unless you want to get bitten or beaten. Number 6. Bull Shark Sharks are a threat to the world in very specific ways, but there is almost always a debate as to which of these monsters of the ocean are the most deadly and which ones are the strongest. There are two top contenders, though, that do have a beef to pick with humans, apparently, and one of them is the bull shark, which some say is the most aggressive shark in the water, believe it or not. They're documented with 100 unprovoked attacks on humans and have a 27% fatality rate at last count, which is higher than any other shark. Plus, because they resemble other sharks, some believe that their numbers of attacks are much higher due to some other species looking like them and thus making it hard to tell who attacked who. 
Yet what makes them monstrous is their temperament, in which they don't really have one. If they feel slighted at all, they'll strike, and that has led to many attacks on humans over the years as a result. And when they do attack, they come to bite hard on you and any other prey in the region. They have a bite strength of 1,350 psi, making it perfect for biting prey into pieces without much effort. So you might be thinking right now, wait a minute, shouldn't the great white shark have the greatest bite power? And that's a natural assumption, but it's not been proven. A computer model once said they have over 4,000 psi of bite strength, but that wasn't a definitive number. The bull shark has been tested for its bite strength, and thus it's here. Number 5. Jaguar The big cats of the world are often rated by size and not exactly their precise strength. For example, I bet you were expecting the lion to be on this list because it's the king of the jungle, but in truth its bite force is only 650 psi. A big cat that is much more deadly in bite force is the jaguar. Should you encounter one, you need to be wary, as these are vicious hunters, with blinding speed and teeth ready to slice and dice. Jaguars are often confused with leopards, but the difference is that leopards don't exist in the western hemisphere. What's more, jaguars are larger and heavier, and that helps make them an apex predator in places like the Amazon where they live. Jaguars are one of the best ambush predators out there, and that's saying something. They like to walk paths and other areas quietly as they stalk their prey, then burst in with incredible speed, hit them in their blind spots, and kill them in as few moves as possible. Jaguars have incredible bite strength as noted, as they're able to bite down with 1,500 psi. Ironically though, jaguars are considered one of the least likely big cats to hunt and kill humans. They have instincts that tell them to flee when they see humans, and most times they only attack humans if threatened, wounded, or if they infringe on their territory. Yet it doesn't make them any less of a hunter. The jaguar is a creature that all animals in its range should fear, as these cats are known to eat at least 87 different kinds of species of animal, and with its bite force, it could easily kill all of them. Number 4. Hippopotamus Hippos in many ways are creatures we lie about because we can't believe how dangerous they are. We think of them as lazy or just being in the river all the time. But in truth, they're some of the most dangerous things you'll find in the world bar none. And if you don't believe my mouth, believe the mouth of the hippo. Hippos are known to be unpredictable, and they'll even attack loyal friends, and even humans who think they've tamed them. Like one South African man who had a hippo as a pet, and then it turned on him. There are also several cases of river tours being disrupted by a hippopotamus despite them not being disturbed in the slightest. They'll rush out and attack anyone they perceive as a threat, and I do mean rush, for despite their massive frames, hippos are known to reach speeds of over 20 miles per hour. When you have that much bulk running towards you, yeah, things are bound to go wrong. But in terms of their bite strength, they're able to put 1,800 psi on their victims, and they've been documented as literally biting things in half. So thus, if you see a hippo, be very careful what you do next. Number 3. American Alligator Many confuse alligators and crocodiles together, but in truth they're very different and often have different abilities compared to the other. In regard to bite strength, the top alligator is that of the American alligator. Found in the US, this creature has a bite force of 2,125 psi. The catch though is while they have that force, their teeth aren't ones that are known for tearing and ripping. It's more likely they'll use their bite force to hold their foe in place while they kill it another way, though it can break a turtle shell or a large mammal bone. Number 2. Saltwater Crocodile Currently the largest crocodile in the world, the saltwater crocodile is a beast of a creature. They're known to get over 20 feet in length and have enough girth that it requires sometimes dozens of people to move them if they don't want to be moved. But with that size also comes incredible bite strength. This croc can produce 3,750 psi of bite force, and that's just insane, and it makes it one of the most deadly creatures in the world as a result. Number 1. Nile Crocodile Known as the largest freshwater predator in Africa, the Nile Crocodile is one that has gotten attention for being a premier apex predator and having a bite force that puts all other animals to shame. For example, if we were to assume that the great white shark has 4,000 psi of bite force, the Nile Crocodile still beats it, mainly because it has 5,000 psi of bite strength. That's not the kind of number you would expect from not just a crocodile, but one that is not the biggest around. Yet they have that power, and they're not afraid to use it. This is why humans fear the Nile Crocodile, because it's one that is known to be a man-eater, and has killed hundreds if not thousands of humans every single year. Number 10. 
Tasmanian Devil. It should go without saying, the real-life Tasmanian Devil is one of the cutest animals ever, even more adorable than the namesake Looney Tunes character. Forget koalas and kangaroos, Tasmanian devils are the cutest creatures down under. They kind of look like bear cubs, but even more endearing. But don't let their cuddly looking demeanors fool you, Tasmanian devils are deadly beasts. These are some of the most aggressive animals around and they weigh less than 30 pounds. Tasmanian devils aren't friendly, they aren't sociable, they live alone, and they only come out at night to cause trouble. In fact, they aren't even cuddly. Their fur is coarse and uncomfortable to touch. Tasmanian devils also kind of stink. They have a scent gland that they use to mark their territory and it smells repulsive. To give you an idea how fiercely aggressive they are, they were named Tasmanian devils because the early settlers in Australia could hear their blood-curdling shrieks at night and it made them think of demons screaming in the dark. When the Tasmanian devil feels threatened, they'll go into a fit of rage, barring their teeth and emitting a loud, frightening noise. But they don't spin in wild circles like the cartoon character. This harmless looking creature is actually vicious and aggressive, and seriously deserves to be called a devil. Number 9. Slow Loris Almost every list of the cutest and deadliest animals in the world is bound to include the slow loris. It's a nocturnal animal that will make your heart melt with its big brown eyes. It's practically begging for a hug and a cuddle. But you might want to think twice before picking up a slow loris. They're incredibly poisonous. The slow loris has a venomous bite that can cause you to go straight into anaphylactic shock. You could even die. And it gets its poison from the strangest place. The slow loris has a venom gland inside of its upper arm, and it licks this gland, mixing its venom with its saliva before chomping down on an enemy. It's a weird self-defense tactic, but it works. The unfortunate thing about the slow loris being so cute is that a lot of people try and keep them as illegal pets. And not only is this a bad idea because the slow loris can kill you, but it's also a bad idea because it's dangerous for the animal as well. They're super close to extinction and are actually threatened thanks to the illegal animal trade. They don't survive well in captivity, no matter how cute they are. Can you imagine having a slow loris or any other exotic animal as a pet? I would never keep something that dangerous in my house personally, but some people do love their exotic pets. Do you know anyone who has a strange or unique pet? Let me know what animal they have in the comments below. And after you're done with that, remember to subscribe if you haven't already. If you want to keep seeing informative videos just like this one, you just have to subscribe. Number 8. Moose when you think about cute animals, you probably don't think about the moose, but they deserve way more respect in terms of adorable creatures. Sure, they're absolutely enormous, and yeah, moose on the roads can cause a lot of fatalities every year. But have you ever stopped to look at a moose, especially a baby moose? They're super innocent and sweet. However, the little baby moose grows into a dangerous adult moose. According to How Stuff Works, moose wound more people every year in Alaska than grizzly bears and black bears combined. The big difference between moose and bears is that bear attacks end in death more often, whereas moose don't typically kill anybody. That's because moose aren't naturally aggressive. They have a passive attitude and mostly hang out and munch on grass and tree bark. They even eat trash in anchorage in the wintertime when there isn't much grass around. They won't attack for no reason, but you shouldn't approach a moose if you see one. It will almost certainly be taller than you and one misplaced kick from a gentle moose could do some irreversible damage. To discourage people from starting moose incidents, you can actually face one year in prison for feeding a moose in Alaska. Number 7. Wolverine The Wolverine kind of looks like that Tasmanian devil, but it might be even more adorable. The wolverine is like a ferocious mix between a weasel and a honey badger. And according to CBC, they actually are technically weasels. Wolverines are the largest member of the weasel family that live on land. And oddly enough, giant otters take the spot as the biggest type of weasel ever, but they're marine animals. While they are adorable themselves, wolverines are also charming but deadly. While you're unlikely to ever see one in the wild, if you do accidentally corner one, it would be a really bad move. They're about the size of a small dog, and they have claws like cats and aren't afraid to tear you apart. You probably wouldn't die, but it would still be a pretty ugly encounter. If an animal is killed in a fight with a wolverine, it would probably try to eat it. They're notorious for eating anything and everything. They'll eat plants, dead animals, live animals, and literally anything else that's edible. Their teeth are strong enough to easily chomp through bone. If you've ever been curious about where wolverines live, they typically hang out in the Canadian wilds, which explains why the superhero Wolverine from the X-Men comic books is also Canadian. Number 6. 
Pfeffer's Flamboyant Cuttlefish. What a name! It's as flamboyant as the animal itself. There's a lot of talk about these blue-ringed octopuses being one of the cutest and deadliest animals, but the Pfeffer's Flamboyant Cuttlefish deserves some attention too. This tiny cuttlefish has two arms and eight tentacles and it's one of three known cephalopods that are venomous. When threatened, this tiny sea monster will shoot ink to confuse predators and try to escape. And when it's hungry, it'll use its tentacles to catch prey and then feast on them with its beak. As for their toxins, it's actually their flesh that's poisonous. The only way you could die from one of these is by eating it. Still, it's a deadly little critter. One of the most interesting things about the Pfeffer's flamboyant cuttlefish is that it has something called a cuttle bone, which it uses to maintain buoyancy. But they don't actually swim, they just float, and they use their tentacles to walk along the ocean floor. Marine life truly is some of the strangest on planet Earth. Number 5. Gila Monsters There are over 4,600 species of lizard on the planet, but one of the cutest and most dangerous is definitely the Gila Monster. Just look at its adorable orange and black skin and its long yellow nails. Or how about the way its purple tongue slithers out of its mouth? It almost looks like it's smiling when it flicks its tongue. But aside from being super cool, the Gila monster is volatile. When threatened, the Gila monster will open its mouth and hiss at you. And if you don't run away like you should, the Gila monster will clamp down on your arm or leg, whatever it can get its teeth into, and it just won't let go. In the wild, they'll keep their victim chomped inside their jaw for up to 15 minutes, and all the while, it's chewing and slowly injecting venom straight into those open wounds. Getting bitten by a snake is a treat in comparison to this drawn-out torture. Even if you try to lift the Gila monster up, it would just bite harder to stay on. The only way to get the lizard off is to dunk it underwater. Luckily, the bite of the Gila monster is not typically lethal, but yes, it is extremely painful. You'll probably vomit, grow weak, come down with a fever, have trouble breathing, and even faint. It really just goes to show you that the best thing you can do when you encounter any animal in the wild is to just leave it alone. Number 4. Leopard Seal Leopard seals are the dogs of the sea. They're absolutely adorable, especially when they're lounging in the snow or slapping their bellies with their flippers. They zip through the water looking all innocent and friendly. But leopard seals are actually savages, violent savages, that will attack anyone and anything and try to eat them with their terrifying teeth. As reported by PBS, Gareth Wood nearly lost his life to a leopard seal. It happened after an Antarctic expedition to the South Pole. After his escape ship sank and he got stranded with the rest of his team in Antarctica, Gareth was forced to hike across the ice. It was during this hike that Gareth was stalked by a crazed leopard seal. It followed him from under the ice. It was when Gareth came to a thin patch and tested it with his foot that the seal exploded from below like a monster from a horror movie. The monstrous leopard seal clamped down on his leg and tried to pull him down into the icy waters. This would have been one of the scariest things I could ever imagine. Luckily, Gareth's friends came to the rescue just in time and kicked the seal until it let him go. But let this be a warning. Even though leopard seals appear to be like legless, smiling dogs, they are definitely not our friends. Number 3. Chimpanzee Not everyone thinks chimpanzees are cute, but a lot of people do. When they're small, chimpanzees are up there with lemurs as some of the cutest tree-swinging animals in the world. As infants, they're needy, super affectionate, curious, and an absolute joy to be around. There's nothing better than bottle feeding a baby chimp. The danger comes when they're grown though, and they do grow fast. Chimpanzees are uniquely intelligent and ridiculously powerful. By five years old, a chimpanzee is gonna be stronger than most humans. They also begin to turn destructive and angry, kinda like a teenager. They absolutely hate being told what to do. Those who have chimps as pets can attest to their sudden bursts of anger. It's not uncommon for a chimp to take off its owner's fingers with a single bite or do some serious damage by beating them up. I would think twice before messing with a chimp. Number 2. Otter Otters are great animals and look as friendly as can be, so what's not to love? They live both on land and in various rivers, lakes, and streams in many different environments. They have webbed feet, thick brown fur, and they look super cute when they're torpedoing through the water. With their long whiskers and funny little arms, they're up there as one of the cutest animals in the world. 
But otters can be mean. A full family of otters can take down a large reptile like an alligator if it comes down to it. And while they are mostly docile and peaceful creatures who hunt snakes and fish, they can be dangerous. You probably won't be randomly mauled by a group of otters, but if you confront one, it could definitely do some damage. They grow to be around 4 feet long and about 30 pounds. With an otter's muscly body and sharp claws, it can easily overpower your dog or child, and it can definitely take a chunk out of you. Otters can also transmit rabies, so even if you walk away with nothing more than a scratch, you would need a shot to avoid going rabid from an otter encounter. It just goes to show, don't judge a book by its cover. Number 1. Beaver This is one of the most intense animal stories ever. Beavers are cute and cuddly critters with their flappy tails and brown fur, but did you also know that they're murderers? As reported by USA Today, a curious fisherman in the European country of Belarus stopped to take a picture of a beaver while on a fishing trip. And who could blame him? Anyone who spotted a cute beaver minding its own business would want to take a picture. The man crept up, went to get an up-close shot of the beaver, and it bit him to death. The beaver literally launched itself at the man, chomped down on his thigh, and severed an artery. The man bled to death before there was anything that could be done. And it's no wonder. A beaver's teeth are able to bite through trees. They literally spend their days gnawing down trees and building dams. So a human thigh is nothing to the mighty and ridiculously adorable beaver. Number 10. Telewickel. Telewickel was a Telex called Teca General, who lived in the pre-16th century of what is now Mexico. It's said that this brutal warrior was captured by the Aztecs, but soon integrated into their community and became part of their clan. While nobody really knows why this savage warrior stayed with his captives, some claim it was because the women of the Aztecs all loved him. This was an understandable motivator for him to remain with his captors and become part of their nation. At some point, Telewickel was promoted to be the commander of one of the Aztec armies. The legends say he was so large and powerful that none of the other soldiers could lift any of his weapons because they were just too heavy. However, when the Aztecs went to war with the Tlaxcala, the original tribe of Telewickel, he refused to fight for the Aztecs against his own people. He was also not allowed to go back to his own people to fight against the Aztecs. For this reason, he was stuck in the middle and had nowhere to go. Rather than fight against his clan, he requested to be given a warrior's death. This meant he was to fight as a gladiator until he died. But this was no easy feat for such a brutal warrior. He could not lay down and be killed, and so he fought back, and he killed eight eagle warriors and wounded another 20 before he was finally taken down. It's claimed that after his death, Telewickel's heart was cut out by a high Aztec priest and sacrificed to the gods. What a legendary and savage soldier. I mean, I could never imagine being involved in that kind of armed combat, could you? What would you do? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. There's lots of amazing videos coming out every week and you don't want to miss even one. Number 9. Galvedino The story of Galvedino is extremely old. He was a Mapuche warrior who lived during the 1500s in South America. The army of Spanish conquistadors captured several thousand Mapuche Indians during the Battle of Lagunas, which took place in the land that is now part of modern-day Chile. The Spanish leader ordered his troops to cut off the right hand and nose of every warrior they captured. Unfortunately for Galvedino, he had both his hands cut off because he was the leader. This was done as a message to the Mapuche, a warning for them to give up or else they would meet horrible ends. In the case of Galvedino, the story goes that he offered up his hands to be cut off without even blinking. He then asked to be killed, but his captors denied his request. Instead, Galvedino and a few dozen other warriors were freed in order to tell their general to surrender, thus preventing further bloodshed. Instead of doing that, Galvedino continued to fight the Spanish intruders. But of course, he had no hands. It didn't do too much good to fight the enemy with no hands. So before the next attack, Galvedino fastened knives to both of his wrists. He basically turned himself into a real-life version of Edward Scissorhands. A month after he'd been captured and released, Galvedino fought at the Battle of Milarapque. The Mapuche lost dramatically to the Spanish commander Mendoza, and Galvedino was captured yet again. Despite cutting down many men with his scissor hands, Galvedino was captured and sentenced to hang. Even today, Galvedino's story speaks volumes of the determination and fearsomeness of the Mapuche warriors of South America. These were not guys you would ever want to mess with. 
Number 8. Spartacus There's no warrior in history more famous than Spartacus. He was a Thracian gladiator who led a slave revolt with an enormous army against the Roman forces. Spartacus led his men up and down the Italian peninsula, defeating dozens of Roman attacks and earning his place as the most badass warrior in history. Today, you can find a marble statue of Spartacus at the Louvre Museum in Paris. He's immortalized in movies and TV and will likely continue to thrive in popular culture forever. But the truth of Spartacus' life is actually a little vague. According to Life Science, most experts agree that Spartacus was from Thrace, a small area in the southeast of Europe that the Romans subjugated during the first century BC. Spartacus likely served in the Roman auxiliary, at some point deserted and likely became abandoned, and then was later captured and brought to Rome, where he was sold as a slave. Just like in the TV series, Spartacus was taken to a gladiator school in Capua, 120 miles south of Rome. And while at the school, Spartacus helped to organize a breakout of about 70 gladiators, all of whom escaped armed with knives and other makeshift weapons from the kitchen. Here, Spartacus went on to build a massive army that was able to challenge the very might of Rome. However, his revolt eventually came to an end, and Spartacus was killed in battle in April of 71 BC. To this day, he's widely regarded as one of the toughest and most impressive warriors of all time. Number 7. Miyamoto Musashi Miyamoto Musashi was born in the year of the monkey, 1584. And unlike Spartacus, Miyamoto was a samurai wizard. It's unlikely that he actually practiced magic, but he did teach himself the art of swordplay from a very young age. By the time Miyamoto was 13 years old, he was traveling around Japan and challenging grown men to sword duels. As the legend goes, Miyamoto's father was also a swordsman and a martial artist. Scholars are unsure whether Miyamoto learned much of how to sword fight from his father, but there is an agreement about Miyamoto's bathing habits. The legend claims that he never bathed because he did not want to be taken by surprise and killed while bathing, so he just decided not to though his stench likely distracted his opponents in battle, which gave him another advantage. It's claimed that throughout Miyamoto's life he had over 60 duels and never suffered a single loss, which would make him one of the best swordsmen to have ever picked up a blade. He even wrote a book about how to handle a sword so that others could learn from his secrets. It's rumored that he gave his brother the book before he died in the year 1645. It was later translated to English in 1974 and has been deeply studied. Miyamoto Musashi perished with his walking cane in one hand and his sword in the other, and his violent life gifted him a prominent place in Japanese history as one of the most impressive swordsmen of all time. Number 6. Flamma Flamma, or the Flame, was a Roman soldier born as Marcus Calpurnius Flamma. He fought in the First Punic War, leading over 300 soldiers straight into the heart of Carthage on a brutal rescue mission. Carthage was once a major city in the old days of the Roman Empire, and is now a small town in the northern African country of Tunisia. Back during the first of several wars between the Carthaginians and the Romans, this mission failed and nearly all of Flamma's men were killed in battle. The legend goes that Flamma was pulled out from under the massive pile of his dead soldiers and then taken prisoner and sent to a gladiator school as his punishment. From here, things get a little bizarre. It turned out there were two things that Flamma loved quite a bit. The first was being famous and the second was fighting. He found his niche as a brutal gladiator and refused to stop fighting. Nobody even needed to force him to fight. In drastic contradiction to Spartacus, Flamma had no desire for liberation. Even after Flamma won his freedom by defeating his enemies in the ring, he declined. Rather than be a free man, Flamma preferred to stay as a slave and fight again and again. Apparently, he just wasn't impressed enough with himself and wanted to earn his freedom more times. It's recorded that he actually won his freedom and the famous wooden baton known as Rudius that was so coveted by all other gladiators four different times, but he denied it each and every time so he could keep on fighting. Flamma was eventually killed during his 22nd arena fight at the tender age of 30. It has to be said that by any normal standards, this guy was at least a little bit sadistic and also a little bit out of his right mind. Number 5. Xiao Dun Xiao Dun was one of the greatest military generals in the Han Dynasty. He was known widely throughout China as Blind Xiao, and he got his name because of a battle in which he got shot in the eye with an arrow. One of the legends says that Xiao actually pulled the arrow out of his eye socket and then popped his eyeball into his mouth and ate it to show off his ferocity. Nobody knows for sure if this actually happened, but it's one of the myths surrounding this incredible warrior. 
In fact, there is really not much more disturbing and terrifying than pulling out your own eye and eating it, let's be honest. This allowed him to become the brutal one-eyed warrior. While much of his life is shrouded in ancient Chinese politics having to do with different governors and provincial squabbles, the basic truth is that he was a savage warrior. He was also a great leader and led many successful campaigns against rival factions. He saved farmers from droughts and locust infestations, and he defended the homeland with brutal efficiency. He was eventually promoted to general in the year 204 and continued fighting all the way until 220, helping to defeat Emperor Xi'an before ultimately succumbing to nature. He died of natural causes several months after the death of his leader, Chao Chao. His story is part of the famous legendary romance of the Three Kingdoms, one of the greatest tales in Chinese literary history. Number 4. Arminius Arminius was born somewhere around 18 BC as the son of a German barbarian chief. However, Arminius ended up being captured as a child, and in the year 1 AD, he was forced to join the Roman army as a hostage. But this afforded him some pretty good training. He was trained in expert Roman military tactics and eventually became an actual Roman citizen. Little did the Romans know that later on, all that training would turn against them. The most impressive battle that Arminius is known for is the Battle of Teutoburg Forest. He first reported to his superiors that there was a rebellion going on in the north of Germany, persuading the leaders to divert three full legions to squash the rebellion. Of course, the rebellion was not real, and the three legions marched directly into a trap. Arminius ended up ambushing the Roman soldiers with his own men, killing about 20,000 people. By the time the Roman generals realized they had been outsmarted, it was too late. Arminius successfully destroyed the three legions and continued to drive the Romans out of Germany. This was one of the biggest defeats for the Roman Empire, and they were not very happy about it. They retaliated, but Arminius simply pushed them back every time, using his superior intellect and fighting skills. This story does take a pretty sad turn, though, as Arminius was eventually married, only to have his wife captured by the Romans and his son grow up in Roman custody just like he had. Arminius was then killed by a rival Germanic chief, not even by the Romans he had come to despise, and his story came to a tragic end. Number 3. Hut Yun Hut Yun might be the most unique warrior of all time. She was a fearsome Mongolian princess, who according to Marco Polo himself, was so strong and powerful that she could have been a giantess. Her character was even dramatized on the recent television show Marco Polo. Hut Yun was the cousin of Kublai Khan, one of the most brutal Khans of all time, and grandson of the great Genghis Khan. Not only was she royalty, she was also one of the most skilled warriors in the Mongolian Empire. She was proficient in fighting, she was excellent on a horse, and she was one of the best wrestlers in the world. In fact, whenever she had a suitor ask for her hand in marriage, she forced them to fight her in a wrestling match. However, none of them could beat her in a match, and so she never got married to any of them. But she did collect horses from all the losing suitors until she had a collection of over 10,000 horses. That makes her one impressively tough lady. When her father was dying, he tried to name her the successor of the Mongolian Empire, but the military and political advisors would not allow a woman to rule anything and so she never did get the throne. She did marry, though, after picking a man herself. She ended up guarding her father's tomb for five years after his death, until she eventually died as well. But she left quite the legacy behind. In Hannah Jewell's book, She Caused a Riot, she wrote that Hoot Yun left the Mongolian steppes littered with debris of shattered male egos. If ever there was a woman worthy of being a feminist icon, it's Hoot Yun. Number 2. Lubu Lubu was another warrior from the era of the Han Dynasty, living in the same time as Xiao Dun. His nickname was the Invincible Warrior, and his was one of the most feared warriors in the entire country. Lubu was a master archer, a master horseman, and a master fighter in hand-to-hand -hand combat. However, it's said that his loyalty was not very stable. He supposedly abandoned his family roots to join a rival master named Dong Zhu after he offered Lubu the fastest horse in the land. He gave up his loyalty for a horse. But then, when things began to go badly for his new lord, Lu Bu simply shrugged off his loyalty and assassinated him. He then spent most of his life wandering around central and northern China, associating with local warlords. He went on to defeat Chao Chao, the master of Xiao Dun, in a battle, but was eventually run off. Lu Bu joined forces with yet another warlord named Yan Shu and tried to defeat Chao Chao once and for all, but he was defeated with the help of Xiao Dun, the one-eyed warrior. This once invincible warrior was then put to death at the command of Chao Chao. Number 1. Prince Rupert of the Rhine 
Prince Rupert of the Rhine was born in 1619 in Prague, now the capital of the Czech Republic. According to Britannica, he was the most talented commander of the English Civil War, which took place between 1642 and 1651. His tactical genius was unparalleled, and his technique as a cavalry officer has earned him a place in the halls of history as a seriously amazing warrior. Prince Rupert was the nephew of King Charles I and fought for him against the Imperial forces in the Thirty Years' War in the year 1638. However, this was in his youth, and he was captured and eventually held in Austria for three long years. After his release, Prince Rupert returned to England and joined forces with his uncle Charles I just before the outbreak of the Civil War. He received full command over the cavalry at this young age of 23 and led his troops to many victories. He took Bristol in 1643, Nottinghamshire in 1644, and most of Lancashire in the same year. Unfortunately, he was soundly defeated by Oliver Cromwell in Yorkshire, but despite his loss, Rupert was made the Duke of Cumberland and became the commander of the King's armies on November of 1644. His great military prowess went on for a little longer, but he was eventually defeated and forced to surrender the city of Bristol, at which point the King dismissed him from his command in 1646. After the King was defeated by the Scots, Rupert was banished from England. After his banishment, Rupert turned to piracy and moved to Germany, then was again given a position of naval command in the Third Dutch War. He even became the first governor of the Hudson's Bay Company in 1670 before dying. He truly led quite an extraordinary life, if you ask me. Number 11. Lufchen The Lufchen is one of the most rare, valuable, and respected dogs in the world. They're small, long-haired dogs with traditionally shaved legs and back half, so that its head and front hair look big and fluffy. This is a dog that has been around since the Renaissance and has earned the nickname the Little Lion. While it may not seem that special to us common folk, for noblemen in the Renaissance era, they were very valuable. They were seen as a symbol of class, wealth, and dignity. In fact, if you look at many paintings from that era, you're going to see many Lufchens in them, further showing its respect within the upper echelon of the elite. Despite how they used to be praised, Lufchens are quite rare now, and if you want to go get one, you'll have to pay a heavy price to get them. Some of them can cost as much as $8,000, but if you are able to get one, you'll have a great companion that's loyal, friendly, and get this, hypoallergenic. Have you ever seen this specific dog before? Do you maybe have one? Definitely let me know in the comments below, they seem really cool. Number 10. Toucan The toucan is an extremely cool bird, with its colorful beak and black body. They're famous for their massive beak because it's pretty hard to miss. Plus, I don't know if you've maybe eaten cereal in, I don't know, the past 40 years? It should be a very recognizable bird for you. Toucans can be found from southern Mexico through Central America down to northern Argentina. Within the 40 different species of toucan, you can find numerous variations on the colored beak. It can help it stand out, and people really like that exotic look, so much so that they're willing to pay through the nose. Or would that be through the beak in this case? But they'll pay it just to have a toucan as a pet. At a minimum, a toucan can sell for as much as $5,000. However, some jack the price way up, going up to $10,000 in some cases. So it's not a bird that just anyone can get. In Mesoamerica, the toucan was highly revered for its feathers and were eaten as food and kept as pets. In some countries in Latin America, anyone that discovers the toucan nest in the wild is its owner and entitled to sell the bird and its eggs. If you do want to get a toucan, be sure to get one from a reputable breeder, and not get one that was just taken from the wild. You can get one for just over $1,000, so save yourself the $10,000 price tag. Number 9. Debraza's Monkey It may not look like it at first, but this is one of the rarest monkeys in the world. It's called the Debraza's Monkey. The reason that this particular monkey is rare is that you have to look really hard to find it. I don't mean that they're able to camouflage themselves or that they live in remote areas. It's honestly a little different than that. This monkey is also known as Swamp Monkey because it lives in the wetlands of Central Africa. As for their name, they were actually named after a French explorer who found them. Given their incredible hiding prowess, it makes you wonder how they were found at all. Still, they're out there, and they're expensive. They sell in the range of seven dollars to $10,000. And even if you can't afford that, you have to remember something. This is a monkey, and monkeys last a long time. In the case of the Debraza's monkey, they can last up to 22 years, which does make them a rather long-lasting pet that many would enjoy. But as others will tell you, monkeys aren't the best at interacting with people at times. Number 8. 
Hyacinth macaw. There are many species of macaw, but if you're looking for the biggest one, you have to go for the hyacinth macaw. Just as impressive, though, is that the hyacinth macaw is the largest flying parrot in the world. In terms of price, you'll have to shell out 15 grand for this bird. You'll find this macaw in South America in the eastern and southern lands. But while they were once very populous in the region, that has long since stopped. They started to become popular as pets, and so people started grabbing them and selling them all over Europe and Asia in markets. Instead of sustainable breeding, they were simply captured out in nature and sold. And thus, their population in the wild is actually much lower than it used to be. And that's just another reason to dislike the black market animal trade. Like all parrots and macaws, the hyacinth macaw has a very powerful beak, and it's even stronger than it looks as this macaw uses its beak to crush seeds and nuts with a very powerful shell. It eats seeds, fruits, nuts, vegetables, and other things, which means it's not hard to take care of, but they do need a lot of attention. What about you? Would you get one of these birds? Have you maybe ever had a parrot? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe to WorldList if you're new here. We've got lots and lots of videos coming up. Number 7. Palm Cockatoo Behold the Palm Cockatoo! It's the largest black cockatoo in existence, and is native to Australia which alone makes it not only rare but expensive to get, because if you don't live in Australia, you'll be paying for large shipping costs. Many people love this bird not just for its unique look and size compared to other birds of its type, but also it's a really sociable bird. In fact, it's been noted that these are a type of bird that need the attention of its owner, which is perfect for a person who loves to show affection to their pet. But if you want one, you'll have to pay about $16,000 for it, which may sound high, but you need to recall that these are birds exclusive to the region. And they're ones that are endangered due to black market trading. And just as important, they're not an easy species to breed. Number 6. Stag Beetle The stag beetle is a very strange bug, and it's a bit rare, both of which hike up the price of an insect that you might not think of as valuable. When it comes to looks, the stag beetle does indeed stand out. It has a blood-red antler that protrudes out of its head and forms quite a distinctive shape. What's more, its mandibles are actually very curved, making it stand out even more. On average, the stag beetle can be found with a length of about 2 to 3 inches. But in the case of one man, he bred one that was a bit bigger. And he found a buyer who was interested in buying it. And he sold it for, get this, $89,000. That's right, a stag beetle sold for 89 grand. Granted, this was in Japan, and it's likely that other realms won't have the same price on them, but they're still valuable, and that's what matters for many. Number 5. Ashira The Ashira is one of the rarest cats in the world for a very simple reason. They're very low in number, and they're literally bred into life. Specifically, the Ashira was developed by Lifestyle Pets, a California-based company and the cat sells for five to six figures as only a hundred have been sold each year since 2006, which is the key metric here, because while many species are bred in much larger numbers, the Ashira is held back in that regard. The Ashira is a hybrid of the African Serval, the Asian Leopard, and the domestic house cat. In terms of price, some of them honestly sell for $125,000, and on the low end, it can still be about $22,000 to get one of these cats. So as you can see, it can vary a lot. However, there is one more caveat that needs to be mentioned, because to get one of these cats, you have to be put on a waiting list. Number 4. White Lion Cubs The big cats, as they're known, are breeds of large cats that you may want to own, but are told you can't whether it's lions, tigers, or cheetahs most dream of owning. But some have wanted to go beyond that and own the rarest of the rare of the big cats, the white lion. To be clear, the white lion is not what you're thinking in regards to its origin. Now, you might have heard of a white tiger before, but that's actually a genetic defect, and it's dangerous to try and breed them because they don't last. But for lions, it's an entirely different thing. It happens naturally, and when it does, it's very rare. At present, there are about 300 white lions in the world today, or at least that's what many speculate. They are highly revered, but also hunters want to catch them as trophies. And just as curious as their rarity is where they're found. Sometimes you can find them on a wildlife reserve in Africa, though some have been bred for hunting purposes due to their rarity, something many oppose. If you were to get one, it would cost you about $138,000, if not more. Number 3. Big Splash Dog breeding to many is an art form, and because of that it can lead to all sorts of variety. 
Dogs are sold for various reasons and for various prices, but when it comes to the breed known as the Tibetan Mastiff, it's a bit of a different story. You see, these dogs are very rare, mainly because, as their name suggests, they aren't seen very often outside of Tibet. So to have one in a country outside of it makes it rare and valuable. In China, they actually view the Tibetan Mastiff as a status symbol because of their rarity. And to that end, a coal baron from China went and bought a Tibetan Mastiff named Big Splash for a whopping $1.5 million. According to the seller of the dog, Big Splash was a perfect specimen and could have been used for various purposes by the owner, including being one leased out for stud fees. However, this owner decided to take the status symbol approach. Big Splash was taken care of in every way, treated like royalty, and untold amounts of cash were spent to make sure he was happy and healthy all the time. Which goes to show just how far people will go for the perfect dog for them. Number 2. Green Monkey Don't let the name fool you, the animal known as the Green Monkey is actually a horse, one that was valued at $16 million. At two years old, Green Monkey was purchased by Demi O'Brien at the Calder Racecourse during an auction. The reason it was so prized and expensive was because it was a true American thoroughbred, which means it had a high quality to it in terms of racing and what it could breed. He was also a descendant of legendary racehorse Secretariat. Weirdly, Green Monkey never won an official race due to an injury. However, its descendants were Kentucky Derby winners, so it wasn't all for naught. However, despite his massive cost, Green Monkey was euthanized in July of 2018. Number 1. The Black Market Trade it may sound depressing, but it's honestly very important to underline the fact that in the world today, there is not just a legitimate way to get animals, but a very illegitimate way of getting animals as well. The black market, or the illegal pet trade, is huge, and it's been going on for a really long time. You would think that an illegal market for animals wouldn't really be necessary or successful nowadays, but sadly you'd be very wrong. In fact, there are people all over the world who are willing to pay thousands, tens of thousands, and even millions of dollars to get exotic animals that they either can't get legally or would take a very long time to procure. There are huge networks of people breeding and capturing animals, taking them to areas where there are few regulations and people can come pick them up. According to the World Wildlife Fund, wildlife crime is a big business. Run by dangerous international networks, wildlife and animal parts are trafficked much like illegal drugs and arms. By its very nature, it is almost impossible to obtain reliable figures for the exact value of the illegal wildlife trade. Experts at Traffic, the Wildlife Trade Monitoring Network, estimate it runs into the billions of dollars. That's right, it's billions with a B. This big money means that people and organizations are willing to take animals from their natural habitat. The exotic pet trade is sometimes legal, but a major demand for illegal exotic pets has increased in recent years. It's easy to take a monkey from the jungle, for example, maybe use it in a breeding operation and then sell it locally or smuggle it out of the country. National Geographic reports that groups will go so far as to intentionally mislabel animals as captive bred when they're not and then export them legally, but the animals are taken from their home illegally. Tortoises from Madagascar, rare reptiles, African gray parrots, they're all highly endangered because of this demand for them as pets. Many animals suffer during capture and transport, and even if they do end up at their final destination alive, they're often distressed, unable to eat, move, and behave as they would in the wild. But like other things, the greed for some is just too much, and smuggling animals is a very easy way to make a lot of money, no matter what the cost to nature, the community, and the environment. Thanks for watching. What did you think of this look at some of the most expensive animals in the world? Which ones blew your mind in terms of their price? Can you believe certain animals sell for that much money? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to World List, and I'll see you next time on the channel.